On December 8, 2022, WNBA star Brittany Griner was freed in a prisoner swap with convicted Russian arms dealer Victor Boot. Boot was arrested in 2008 by undercover agents from the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration after they said he pledged to sell millions of dollars worth of weapons that would be used to shoot down American military aircraft. Boot was convicted in 2011 on four felony counts, including conspiracy to kill Americans, and sentenced to the mandatory minimum 25 years. Upon his return to Russia, Boot ran for office and now serves in a local Russian legislature. In his first interview with U.S. media since his release, the man known as the Merchant of Death spoke about Griner and how he became part of the highest profile prisoner exchange since the Cold War. 294 days after her arrest in Russia, Brittany Griner headed home. Freed in a high level prisoner exchange with the U.S. releasing Russian arms dealer Victor Boot. Nicknamed the Merchant of Death. The Merchant of Death. The so called Merchant of Death. When did you become aware that the Russian government wanted to, to trade to bring you back home? Well, uh, this was uh, immediately after actually I was sentenced in New York, Southern District, in this court, where the representative of uh, embassy came to see me uh, regularly, and they said that you know Russian government will try to do everything possible because they considered this. Uh, uh, judgment uh, kind of uh, illegal or uh, because I was arrested for the conspiracy charges, which is not existing, not only in Russia, but in many other countries. When do you think you first heard the name Brittany Griner? I knew that Brittany Griner was playing in a Russian team, winning a Russian championship. And then, of course, I heard when she was arrested. Were you able to follow her trial? Of course, because look, in the United States, I guess only lazy would not, you know, <laughs> cover her trial. Every, you know, talking radio host, every news station, every TV channel, on their news broadcast. So this was a big deal, I guess, you know, especially in jail. What did you think about her case? Russia had a lot of trouble with the drugs maybe 10, 15 years ago, and there is a lot of effort to, you know, really limit the use of the drugs in Russia. Brittany Griner was a really a very well respected player in a Russian, you know, woman basketball. And I don't believe that this was uh, intentionally set up or something was uh, prepared or it was, uh, you know, kind of the trap for her. She was sentenced to nine and a half years. Uh, what, did, what did you think of that sentence? Well, look, at the same time, I was sentenced for the 25 years just for talking, all right? And she was sentenced for nine years just for taking a CBD oil, you know, into the Russia. So if you put this time too, you would say, look, the both thing really doesn't smell right. She was convicted for trafficking 0.7 grams of cannabis oil. You were convicted for conspiracy to kill Americans, trying to sell arms to a terrorist organization. And you saw that there was a great deal of outrage from some in this country. What do you say to them? Well, think of this, that the same outrage was in Russia when I was sentenced to 25 years. Many people would say, for what? Just for talking? Are you serious? Boot maintains his innocence and says he never intended to sell the weapons. But when the undercover agents told him that the weapons would be used against U.S. pilots, Boot responded, we have the same enemy. There is no even a proper translation to Russian of the term of conspiracy. We don't have such even a legal term. So this is the same kind of outrage in Russia about my case and about many other cases. How did you identify with her and what she might be going through at the time? Of course, I feel, you know, bad or sorry for any person who's going to be used as a pawn despite whether they committed something or not. Publicity is a like multiplying factor which can really kills you if you are, are not strong enough to handle it. You feel that that once she was arrested, she she became a pawn. I don't think we were even able to to know all the facts, but definitely that the normal person has to pay a price because politicians from the both sides trying to play chess 
on this big chessboard, which they call geopolitics. And I feel really sorry when uh, this wheel of destiny or go through somebody else's lives, ruining it, because I have my own experience. When did you first hear that you might be involved in some sort of deal? Look, uh, the first thing I heard is exactly what uh, CNN or other channels would, you know, push the story. And then, of course, your channel, ESPN, was uh, very big, almost, you know, uh, daily talking about, you know, Brittany Griner and possible exchange with me. When did you finally hear it's happening, you're going home? Well, when the guards came, you know, at four o'clock in the morning with the boxes, you know, knock my grill at my cell to say, hey, you know, wake up and pack up, you're leaving. Then I realized, yes, I'm going home. And how did they transport you? Well, they took me to the van, they brought me to the local airport, and then uh, we flew to the uh, Washington DC and there, after the certain uh, waiting, finally we bought this airplane and went with a one stop to the Abu Dhabi, where exchange happened. What stands out in your mind when you think about that flight? You see, I was excited. I was on my way home and having some conversation was kind of distract me from my own, you know, uh, heart, which was a beating on the high, you know, rate. And so at the same time, you know, having a chance to talk to those people who've been arranging your exchange and seeing in their eyes and feel their personality, to see the human behind that all official, you know, uh, shell of uh, those government employees who do the job. So when the plane landed in Abu Dhabi, what happened from the time it touched down until you were able to leave? So they put the two planes together and then, you know, Give a short instruction, went out, and here you are. Somebody showed up from Russian side, saying me hi, everything is fine. I said yes. So he identified me, and then a couple of minutes afterwards, the exchange uh, literally happened. Do you remember when you first saw Brittany Griner on the tarmac? Immediately, I was a little shocked of seeing her without, you know, her signature, you know, braids. She was way taller than me, and you know, I just shook the hands and I said, you know, I wish you good luck. And, uh, and, when, and we both went to our, you know, planes. Why did you agree to sit down and talk about this? Well, first of all, I have really nothing to hide. Second, I do believe we have a common ground to have at least normal rel relation between our countries. But I hope that one of these days we'll have a perfect and good economic and people-to-people -people relation again. After my conversation with Victor Boot, I spoke with retired U.S. federal judge Shira Shinlin, who presided over his case. She told me that Boot's merchant of death nickname gave him a profile he didn't deserve and that she never viewed him as an active threat to American lives. For more from my conversation with Boot, Judge Shinlin, and sources close to the negotiations, check out our latest story on ESPN.com.